Hello folks and welcome back to Sew What If I Sew, or welcome if you're new, my name is Jess and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related. And if you haven't watched my Make Nine video, Happy New Year, Happy January. Um, so I thought I would pull together a little video on my January sewing plans because I do actually have some fairly good sewing plans this month. This month is a little bit less busy than some of the others coming up so I want to get onto a good start with my sewing. Obviously as always these are just ideas, um, a couple of them like the one I'm going to talk about behind me, is pretty much done. Some of them are for a specific purpose. Um, but overall, it's going to be fun. I'm also hoping you guys notice a difference in my sound quality as part of the journey to podcasting with Sam, Sequin Girly. I have got myself a podcast mic, um, which is sat slightly out of shot, but I'm hoping because of how echoey this room is, I've been thinking for a while I needed a spare mic, like a separate mic. So I'm hoping this makes a big difference. But let me know in the comments if you've noticed. A difference at all I'm hoping you have. Before we kick off, um, so there has been a list going around of things people don't like that vloggers do. I think it's very very easy to criticise because fair enough everyone's allowed their opinion, totally get that. However I would encourage you to think about what it takes to put a vlog out. Now that's all I'm gonna say about this. The Baker That Sews has done a really, really lovely initiative, which is to share all of the lovely things that you guys like that vloggers do. But I would encourage you to go over to Liz's account and read all of the lovely positive um, comments because they're really, really beautiful and I really like them. Um, and that is not to say you can't say, oh, I, I love it when vloggers do this or I hate it when vloggers do this. That's totally fine, but just consider what you're saying and how you're saying it and particularly for the people who leave very specific comments on people's videos you know you can just not watch it's always an option anyway let's crack on so before i show you everything i'm going to sew this month all my plans i'm going to show you what i'm wearing um so i'm hoping the sound's still good this is my chalk and notch fringe uh, the one I made for my birthday two years ago, which still probably gets worn every two weeks, like it gets worn a lot. And my lovely long line, True Bias Marlowe, that I made in collab with So Do It Emma. It's important to me you guys know that I wear my me made wardrobe a lot. Um, whether or not I wear it on YouTube is different, because for me, when I'm particularly filming sew alongs, I'm wearing a jumper in leggings and my hair is up because I'm working. However, when I'm at work, or on meetings and everything, pretty much always me made. Um, but yeah, it's, and I show it a lot on my Instagram as well, but I do love my me made wardrobe. And this dress, particularly as I'm coming up to my birthday very soon, this dress is very special to me and I wear it a lot. So I thought I'd wear it today for a nice little new year confidence boost. I don't think they sell the fabric anymore, but if they do, this fabric uh, is a viscose ecru color from so much more. Um, the Fisherman's Knit is mystery fabric, I can't remember where I got it from, but First for Fabrics do have the same texture of Fisherman's Knit, if not this colour. So, let's talk about January. Okay, so first up, uh, well we're talking about dresses made for my birthday, I'm making another one this year, so anyone who follows me on Instagram will have seen that over Christmas I very much lost my sojo, or for like the, the later part of last year, I very much lost my sojo, and that was for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the sewing room was getting messier and messier and I couldn't bear being in here. I find it very stressful, like I can't come in and do a project because I can't get to my sewing machine because it's really messy. Um, but also I was making presents for people. Winter's hard anyway because it's harder, like everything you could make for a winter wardrobe is more technical. So it's, I always think it's a little bit harder to do a tried and tested, at least for me, in the winter because most of my tried and tested makes are sort of summery. Um, and also I've been running down my fabric stash, so I hadn't bought any fabric in a long time. And part of the problem with that was that I wasn't really feeling inspired because I'd run my fabric stash down to a point where a lot of it is scraps or remnants or fabrics where I'd planned one project, didn't fit into there, didn't work with anything else. So I had a big D stash of patterns and fabric. Um, a huge tidy of the whole office and sewing section with Adam, which was amazing. And I bought a couple of new fabrics, which are here. Um, and actually, I, I don't know, I think what I would say to you is, if you have hundreds of fabrics in your stash, by all means, fabric bound, work through your stash. I actually don't, I don't have that much. 
I have a lot of bulky fabrics, which is why I feel it's harder to store. But I don't actually have that many fabrics. Um, particularly, I've, I've done a little de-stash, but even in my de-stash, that was 90% patterns I'd got free with stuff that I didn't really, or like I'd been given, or that just weren't really me. Um, and a couple of big bulky fabrics that had been taking up space. But I think it's a bit like dieting. You can't restrict yourself fully because the likelihood is you're going to stop, splurge and then feel terrible about yourself. So this year I'm working a little bit more towards mindful fabric buying and consumption of not buying a, a fabric with a single project in mind either. If I'm buying a fabric, I need to have, you know, ideally one, but maybe two or three backup projects if it doesn't work for the project I want. That's where I fall down. I buy a fabric and I go, it's for this, and then this doesn't fit in it, or doesn't work with it, or it's the wrong fabric for it, and then I go, oh, great, I have this in my stash now, fantastic. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a big focus for me this year, is mindful fabric consumption. Um, also... Yeah, my, my sojo just, I think once it goes down, it really goes down and it's quite hard to get back up. So I did a variety of things. One of the things was buying a couple of bits of remnants in the New Year's sales. One of the bits was doing my make nine as well and setting a direction for the year. I always find that helpful. But also, I bought something for the first time. I've never done this before, guys. I bought a kit. It's not here yet. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be here next week because I want to make it for my birthday. Um, but I bought a kit from Stitch and Ink Fabrics which is for the Tilly and Butter, um, Tilly and the Buttons, couldn't say that today, uh, Mabel dress. So I'm going to lean, I'm going to put the picture of the kit here. Um, so it's the Mabel pattern, which is one of the few Tilly and the Buttons patterns that I actually really want to go at. Like, I think that would be really fun. I think it would suit me, hopefully. Um, and the nice thing about the kit is it comes with all the shearing elastics, the right amount of fabric like you don't have to think about it so if you want a little review of how that goes let me know i've never i've never been a kit person but i thought this might be a really nice way to sort of project in a box get it out do it it's a project i wanted to do anyway i really like the fabric um so i'm excited for anyone who doesn't know the tilly and the buttons of mabel is a sort of well you've seen it from the picture but it's a sort of blousy sheared dress um and I've got the notes here to make sure I say this correctly. It runs from a UK 6, which is a 26 inch waist, to a UK 34, which is a 53 inch waist. Um, and you can get it in blouse or dress, elbow length or full length. So actually you've got like four different options really within that. I will be making the elbow length sleeve with the full length dress because I think the long sleeves are gonna look a bit weird on me. Um, and also, because I, you guys know why I don't make Tilly the Buttons patterns generally. It's because they don't normally fit my body. But I'm ready this time, I'm prepared. I am going to make a size 6. Now, my measurements for Tilly the Buttons put me as a size 12. I'm not a size 12. I'm not. And I think that I've had very little success with Tilly the Buttons patterns because the measurements in the block bear no similarity to my body. Note the time I made the Tilly and the Buttons frayer and had to cut six inches off the sleeves, which is insane. So I'm going to make a size six um, because the bust will still come up at 37 and a half inches and I'm like 35, 35 and a half at the moment. So I think that's going to work quite well. Um, maybe a six to an eight, but then there's so much ease because of the shearing. I think a six will be the best way to go for me. I think because then the hips could still come out as like 41 or something on my hips at 36. So... I would imagine that will be okay. Um, and again, it's shearing, so it'll move with me as well, which is something to bear in mind. But I'm really excited about this. It is from Stitch and Ink, who, if you don't know about them, are a Scottish fabric and subscription company. Um, and I believe Alicia now also offers courses and lessons. So I've linked their Instagram and stuff below. Go check them out, they're really cool. Another make for my birthday that is in progress is behind me, is the Atelier Jeep Alex coat. So I'll get it. I don't know what the sound's gonna do, but I'll get it. So, the facing isn't on yet, so please ignore the facing, which I'm gonna sit there. This is the Atelier Jupe Alex coat so far. I've got nice big pockets. It is not lined yet, but it is looking cute. Uh, this fabric I actually got from the Sewist Fabric Shop to make the Jessica blazer many moons ago. Sadly, the Sewist Fabric Shop is no longer with us. 
uh, but it's a vegan coating so it's like a polyester wool vibe um but crucially for this it's a really nice structure to work with for this type of coat um it needs a little bit of a press because it's been sat up um and there is a little bit of dragging in the sleeves actually i'm not too sure why but i think again i think a good press really of all the seams will probably sort it all out um but i am really excited about this it's gonna be really fun and i want it to be done for my birthday weekend i'll put it back up here facing up as well so I don't lose the facing really is just lining and facing and then we're done um but I want it for my birthday because a I want to make sure I have like January and February and March to wear it it's quite a good color for March it looks darker than it is it's much more of like a lilac-y color um but it looks sort of mauve in this light for some reason it's not great light in here but we are where we are um but yeah I'd really like it and I'd like it to wear with the Tilly and the Buttons Mabel because for my birthday my mum is flying down from Scotland which is for the first time my mum used to fly down for my birthday every now and then but the last time she flew down for my birthday was 2016 so I'm very very excited for this it's gonna be really nice my parents came down in 2020 as well which was lovely but when my mum comes down it's like a you know fun little girly trip so it's gonna be nice and then we're going wedding dress trying on the day before my birthday on Saturday and then on the Sunday I'm doing like a girly lunch with my bridesmaids with my sisters with my mum and then Adam's mum it's gonna be really cute um and we're also gonna go wedding dress fabric shopping slash looking because I may not know what I need at that point um so I'm really excited it's gonna be really really fun um but I want my lovely coat and my dress because I think it'd be a really cute outfit and I'd like to ring in the new year with it. Plus, the day after my birthday, I get my new glasses, which are a bit different. I'm very excited. Um, so it's, it's just going to be a whole revamp for my birthday, which we love. So stay tuned. Part two of the sew along for this is in progress. I'm hoping to bring it to you next week um, because it really is just doing the lining now. I'm sticking the facing on, but all the difficult bits are done. So watch this space it is coming your way I was actually filming a lot of it this morning so it is it's not a short so long I as always I'm really bad at splitting so longs to part one and part two I always make part one too short and then part two is very long but I hope you guys enjoy it it should be really fun um and yeah then hopefully when you can see the finished product as well it will help um so that's in progress that and the Mabel are planned for my birthday outfit. Birthday outfits are not only for birthday, they are for life. Um, this is one of my favorite birthday outfits and I wear it all the time. So please don't worry. Some people definitely think that vloggers make something for an occasion and then just, just put it in the bin, which is not true. Um, so I'm very excited for my birthday outfit. Let's see what I've got. So shall we open first? Let's do the envelope then. So obviously I'm wedding sewing this year and that is reflected in my Make 9. Now, the first Make 9 pattern I've actually bought, it's not arrived yet, but it has been bought, it has been done. Um, and that is the Tilly and the Buttons Pearl, which again, uh, I've put on screen here, if you don't know what it looks like. Um, and the Tilly and the Buttons Pearl is the same size range as the Mabel, it's UK 6, 24 inch waist, up to a UK 34? Yeah, 34, 53 inch waist. Um, so that's the first Make 9 pattern I've bought, but it's not arrived yet. So when it arrives, I'll talk about it properly. I have no idea what fabric I'm gonna use. So I'll probably talk about it properly when I've chosen a fabric. The other pattern for my Make 9 that I have bought is here. So this is the, it'll probably be reversed in the camera actually, um, the Sew Over It tie. And it's just called the tie and it's one size, hooray. This is my first bit of wedding sewing. And I'm really excited about this. The reason I wanted to start with the ties is because they are one size and because they're quite small so they're kind of a nice thing to tick off the list I have to make three Adam best man groomsman that's that's all I have to make um, and I thought I'd get them out of the way early and also it would be a nice I'd know it's like a nice little ease in to wedding sewing if you have my wedding dress at this end you have ties at this end and in between the two are Adam's shirt bridesmaids dresses dress for my legal wedding I'm going to talk about in a minute I may now have three wedding dresses <laughs> but the one for my legal ceremony is also like for holidays for the summer generally like it's much more I'll explain I'll explain in a minute um bridesmaids dresses 
my evening dress and then my wedding dress. So there's a lot to sew and I thought kicking off with the ties would be fun. Um, I ordered it in the sale, in the New Year's sale, so it was like three quid. Um, and maybe it was a fiver because I asked for them to print it because I keep forgetting. I keep buying patterns and going, why don't I have them? It's because I've forgotten to get them printed. So I thought I'd get it done at the same time. So it's one, it's not even an A0 sheet, it's an A1 sheet. Um, and we have, sorry guys, um, there's no size lines because it's one size. We have a back of the tie, a front of the tie, a front domette, which I think is the bit that goes underneath the tie. Like the sort of lining he deals. Because then the tie folds on itself as well, doesn't it? And then front lining, back lining, back domette. Ooh, okay. So I'm I'm nervous about this because I remember a sewing bee challenge from a few years ago where they were making ties and they it, it all it all went to all went to pop. I was really trying not to swear there and I couldn't remember what the other phrase is. Um, so I'm a bit nervous, but also all of you guys have made me feel much better in the comments by telling me it's really not that bad. Um, and I'm hoping, basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to buy the fabric to make it in for Adam and the guys. Obviously I'm going to buy like a nice silk for the ties. But I have like a tester fabric in my stash. I'm going to make the first one out of just so I get a sense of what I need to, I've got a duchess satin in my stash I'm gonna use, um, not all of it obviously, a lot of it's gonna be used to twirl my wedding dress actually, um, but I've, I can use a corner to twirl a tie, you know. Um, but I am, I'm nervous because the fabric for a tie is expensive, but on the plus side, you don't need as much fabric. So I don't think I'll need more than a metre, realistically, probably half a metre, but there's three of them, so I'll get a metre. Um, so a metre of front and a metre of back fabric, and that should be fine, I'm hoping. Um, so I might choose the fabric, I'm gonna get Adam to choose the colour of tie he wants from our wedding colours. And then I'm gonna, when I'm wedding dress shopping and going Gold Hawk Road and stuff, I'm gonna have a look for some silk and pick that up so I can get going on that. Right, envelope two. Now I'm conscious about the microphone here. I'm really sorry if the rustling is louder. This is the first time I've done anything with the mic. Um, but it's good though, because I'm recording podcast apps next week and the week after, so um, good to test it out. Now, I love Somi Sunshine. I really do. Their packaging is beautiful and recyclable, but it's also impenetrable. Um, I, I cannot see how you get into this. Oh my God. Well, I can, but it's covered in tape. Um, so... Hang on, I'll hold this away from the microphone for a second. Sorry. Hooray! Right. It's a very big envelope. Um, I bought two remnants. I was very well behaved. Okay. Anything else in there? No? Right, let's put the very loud crinkly thing down. And show you my beautiful, beautiful packaging. Isn't it stunning? I love it. And I've loved seeing the evolution in Somi Sunshine's branding as well. Um, and I love I love the little 10% off codes you get as well in there. It's really cute. Um, and the little Sewing Sunshine. Um, they do these things where it's like fabric, length and width, pre-wash, project ideas. It's like a little project card to go with your fabrics, which I think is really cute as well. Um, really, oh, it's just that's such pretty branding. I'm gonna put that on my wall actually, it's really nice. So, we also love the ribbon, the ribbon is beautiful. Um, and I got two fabrics. Now, can I remember? They're both viscoses because I didn't, I don't have any viscose left in my stash, I've, I've sewed it all. Um, oh, brilliant, they've left the tags on them so I can remember what I bought. Now, this is a meter long remnant, this is beautiful. So, I'm gonna show it up to the camera. As you can see, I'm going to hold it here because lots of you have been asking me to hold these up for longer. So hopefully this is long enough. Um, I'm really bad at judging that. It's beautiful. It's like this orangey pink flowers on a black background with the little dots. Um, I've got 94 centimetres of it. My plan, because I'm a very short woman, is to make a skirt. And hopefully it's going to be the bottom half of the Tammy Handmade rear. So I've put the Tammy Handmade here, but I've cropped it so you can just see the skirt section because it's a dress, it's a bit like a loose summer dress and I love the skirt from it. So what I'm gonna do is make that and then make a little, basically make a waistband. 
stick some elastic in it and away we go. Um, I already have the elastic as well, so I'm hoping this will look really, really beautiful. I'd make a slip skirt, but I don't have enough to do bias cut. Um, and I just prefer like a sort of floaty, elasticated, long skirt. And I like that it's black. I like that these flowers could be autumnal. They can be wintry or they could be really summery with just like a strappy top or like a white shirt or whatever. So really excited about this. It is dead stock. Um, I don't know if it's dead stock from anywhere specific, but it is dead stock. And it feels, oh my God, it feels so nice. It feels beautiful. Fabric two is also viscose. And it's a similar vibe actually, because again, I was thinking about what I like sewing and what I like wearing. I like ditzy florals, particularly on a black background because they go with most of my wardrobe. Anything too statementy doesn't really go with the rest of what I own. So I bought this, which is also a viscose and I have nearly two meters, 1.73 and it's these tiny flowers some of them are white some of them are slightly pink it's like a ditzy viscose really it's really beautiful it's quite similar actually to what my mabel will be end up will end up being um and it's just really lovely and light it, again i bought it, it was a good remnant um and it's viscose as well i have several plans for this and it really depends what fits into it but as i was saying earlier there are there are ideas so one of them is the Holly Dennett Daisy dress, which I can't show you because it's not out yet. Um, so as soon as it is out, I will show you. I was a pattern tester for the Daisy. It's beautiful. You may have seen it a little bit on Holly's grid um, and it is coming your way very soon. I know there's just a few tweaks being made and then it'll be on, on its way to you. But it's a really lovely dress or it might be a size me sewing VN dress. Again, I've got one of those already, but I really like it. I wear it a lot. It's very comfortable. Pockets are enormous fantastic we love that so those are my two options currently however again it's it's 1.73 so i'm gonna see how i feel so those are my two new fabrics i've been very very restrained actually i haven't bought any other fabric so i've got two new ones to add to the stash i've got my new mabel kit and i have got my tilly and the buttons no mabel we've already talked about tilly and the buttons pearl cardigan is on its way as well now there are three other new things i want to talk to you about one of them is a pattern i bought in the sale as well actually i just forgot about this um and as in i'd forgotten it was new but i've mentioned it briefly adam and i are getting legally married a few days before for a couple of reasons, the most overwhelming of which is cost. Because if you have a registrar come to your wedding on a Saturday or Sunday in Essex, it's £900. £900 for me to pay for someone to work on a weekend. No. Um, and also, obviously, then you're very set by what the ceremony has to be because the registrar have, like, you have to say this or this, you have to say this or this, and this has to happen in this order. Um, so we are going to get legally married a few days before because if you get legally married with just two witnesses and do the paperwork, little ceremony, vows, um, and two witnesses, it's like 60 quid. So we're going to do that. And also it means, one of the things I quite like about it is, A, the paperwork is done, which makes the wedding day in many ways a lot more relaxing. We can sort of relax, have fun in front of our friends. I have a horror of forgetting to sign something and not being legally married, which is insane. But it is like... It is a thought I have sometimes where I'm like, oh my God. Um, but also it's kind of nice to just have that little moment, the two of us and our two witnesses, just to go, ah, lovely. And then the wedding day is a massive celebration. We'll still have a ceremony um, with, I think maybe like a humanist celebrant or something, but like, we'll still have a ceremony. We'll still have a big party with all of our friends, but the legal bit is done. And I'm not great at being, the vlog channel sort of belies this about me, but I don't actually like being in the middle of events. I'm, I'm an event planner. I'm an event manager. I am not made to be stood in the middle. I don't like everyone staring at me. Um, I find it, I'm just a bit like, ah. Um, so being able to do the legal bit separately, I find quite relaxing. Um, now I'm not gonna wear a wedding dress to this but I am gonna make a white dress. And what I thought was, I'd make like something flowy and pretty in, in like a white linen or a white, white linen viscose blend um, that I can then wear on holidays and stuff like very, very reusable. 
not stressful, just really nice, something I can wear on holiday, um, I can wear just in the summer floating about. White dresses are actually like, as a summer dress, very pretty, I do like them. Um, so my plan is to use an Amy Winwood pattern. If you haven't heard of Amy Winwood, she's a fantastic designer. She lives in Italy, uh, she's British. I met her at an event at Fabrics Galore in September and she's such a delight, she's such a joy. And I saw the watermelon dress pattern and absolutely fell in love with it. It's so beautiful. So with a following wind, this will be my legal wedding dress um, that will then go on to have a second, third, fourth, fifth life and holidays and summer events and all sorts of stuff. So I've put the pattern here. It's so beautiful. I love the style of it. I love the skirt. I love the slit. I love the sleeves. It's so beautiful. Um, and I think Amy's done such a stunning job. She's designed so many patterns. Go and follow her if you don't already. It's honestly like so, her patterns are so beautiful and the little details are stunning. Um, and I'm so excited to see where she goes really. Like her patterns are so beautiful. Um, I know she's had a little Happy New Year Etsy sale. So I don't know if that's still running, but if it is, go, go, go. If not, she's on Etsy. So go grab yourself a pattern as well. She's brilliant. Um, so that's also new, just for reference, it goes from a UK 4, which is a 26.7 inch waist, to a UK 24, which is a 40 inch waist. Um, and it needs roughly four meters of fabric. That's just one thing to say. It's quite fabric hungry, but that's because of how big the skirt is, really. It's a full length skirt and it has a lot of, I think it's a full circle skirt or it's, it's quite close to that. Like it's very full, um, which I am very excited about, but just to let you know, it's like a four meter ish. Um, and I think I'll make another one as well because I quite fancy a big red one. I think that'd be really beautiful. Um, but yeah, a new pattern recommendation and not a pattern, I wanna say company, but it's Amy, but not a pattern company I've tried before. Now there's two other new things in the sewing room and I don't think I've talked about this yet. So there's two things. Firstly, I went to the Gabrielle Chanel exhibition at the V&A, a very good friend of mine who I used to work with, has been volunteering there for like seven, eight years. Um, so she gets comps for the exhibition and she promised me one of her Chanel comps and oh, it was worth it. I loved it so much. And it was so beautiful, like the design of the exhibition, the garments, the way they'd considered it as a lifestyle, like it was amazing. And one of my favorite things about it was the fact that well, two things actually. Firstly, that Chanel's designs originally came about through wanting women to look nice, but have functional clothes. So she creates basically the loose silhouette and like the drop waist. She, she creates clothes that women can actually move in and move around and do things. She changes clothes so that women can be practical while looking nice. And secondly, she literally creates the suit she creates, like men have suits, men have always had suits. It is realistically, a man can wear a suit to anything and it, no one will really question it. We were out for dinner talking about this with me and my sister and Adam and her partner. And we were saying that like, you know, men can wear a suit anywhere and you know, the guys are going, yeah, but you know, like I, I'm, I'm not wearing a suit now. It's like, yes, but if you were, no one would bat an eyelid. No one would bat an eyelid at all. Women didn't have that type of professional clothing at the time Chanel was designing, so she creates the suit. And that is why I have a print of it from the V&A for the wall of the sewing room. And I think it's very, very beautiful. It's one of the original ones. And I wanted this to remind me, A, of why I make clothes, because they're, they're beautiful, but they're functional. They're to make these women feel empowered to actually do things and like have jobs and have have a formal garment that's actually smart um, and isn't pretty, it's, it's smart. It's like an actual business garment. If that, does this make any sense? I don't know if this makes sense, but it's making clothes that don't exist, either, whether it's for you or just generally. Um, and I love this. I also love the colors. I love this sort of 60s aesthetic as well. I think it's really, really beautiful. Um, so this is going to go up on the wall of the sewing room behind my dress form. I felt like that was the best place to put it. The other thing I've got, which was on my Christmas list, and my mum got it for me because I really need it this year. This. 
So this is a couture sewing bible, pretty much. Now the reason I have this is by Claire B. Schaeffer, I think that's how you say it, but I've linked it below. Um, the reason I have this is really it's for my wedding dress because I don't know that much about multi-layered gown construction. It's a whole different world making, I mean my wedding dress isn't going to be a giant ball gown but equally it's going to have more layers than anything else I've ever sewn. And I'm really excited about that, but I'm also slightly terrified. Like, I want, I need to do it right. I can't have bits falling off or not, you know, like, it's going to be a longer process. So I'm really excited to have this as a companion to sew my wedding dress. Because the thing is, if you go in here, there's all sorts of stuff. There's techniques for every type of garment. But also, at, you know, fairly far through, there's a whole bit, there's a special occasions chapter. And it talks about creating shape with lining and special hem finishes and how to like buttress seams and how to do boning and how to create double layered zips, which were a thing. Didn't know that was a thing, but it is a thing. Um, how to create corselets, how to do embellishments and applique. Like it's, it's amazing. And I'm so excited. I'm so nervous, but I think that this is going to be invaluable and I really like how in-depth it is. I would not say this is a beginner book. I would actively say this is not a beginner book. This is for if you already know how to sew. Even then, I would I would argue this is if you already know how to sew. You're still not going to know most of what's in here, but as a beginner this will probably be unintelligible. So this is really for the for the intermediate to advanced sewists. Um, I would say, can I do everything in here? Probably not. Can I have a go? I, I would say probably. Um, there's also lots of seam techniques and like, there's a lot about like applique and fitting and like shaping garments and stuff, which I'm really excited about. And loads and loads and loads of different types of hand stitch that you use for different stuff, which is something I, I always feel like I've needed. And then there's like different, what different types of threads are used for um, like what their features are, what their uses are in couture. So you've got things from like silk basting thread through to all purpose cotton thread, then cotton wrapped polyester core thread and like all this kind of stuff. And it's, it's so interesting. I love how in depth this is. It's a brilliant present and I'm so excited to use it. So my plan is I'm going to go try on loads of wedding dresses. I'm going to look, basically I've got, the plan is I'm going to a very fancy bridal shop in Marlebone and I've all I've had to pre-order dresses to try on and everything so I'm gonna try them on and I'm gonna look at the insides a lot I'm gonna try them on and feel beautiful as well because I also felt like you know it you gotta have one nice bridal shop experience even if you're not buying a dress um but I want to look because they'll be more couture I want to look at the insides I want to look at how they're constructed as I'm putting them on I want sneaky little looks at how if they're boned how many layers they have all that kind of stuff and then we're going to go to Wed to Be, which is like a wedding dress warehouse, basically. And I'm just going to try on as many dresses as I physically can to see what shapes suit me, what shapes don't, lengths, cuts, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to get loads of photos. Then me, my sisters and mum are going to go for lunch. I don't know if my sisters are coming for the afternoon bit. I don't know if they're interested. But me and my mum are then going to go fabric shopping. And we're going to go to Borovix in Soho, which has like all the costumier fabrics. Um... So it's got like embellished lace and all that, you know, embellished tulle and layers of tulle, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to go look there and then we're going to have a little trot down the Goldhawk Road and have a look at like, you know, silk satins, the sort of underlayer fabrics, tulle, all that kind of stuff. And then I'm going to come home. I'm going to design my dream wedding dress. You know, I'm going to say, right, I want the skirt from this one, the top from this one, the top, blah, 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 all that. And then I'm going to sit down and figure out if I have any patterns that are similar. Vicky sews do an underskirt pattern that I'm definitely going to be using. Or 99% definitely going to be using. Um, even just for shape and length, it'd be really helpful in like fabric amounts. Um, and I'm going to see if there's patterns, like if I have a pattern that has the bodice I like. Or if there's a pattern I want to get that has the bodice I want. And I'll piece together from different patterns and then a bit of self-drafting as well. 
and then we'll see where we go. I have a couple of meters, I think I have three meters actually, of Duchess satin, which has been sitting in the sewing room for this day specifically. And I will use that to test the shapes of my bodice and the top of my skirt, like skirt to waist fit, all that kind of stuff. Um, because it's structured enough to give me a chance to actually practice the techniques um, without damaging wedding dress fabric. And then I will go and buy the wedding dress fabric I need. Um, I'm really excited, but I'm very, very nervous as well. But that is roughly the plan and that is why I have that book. So that's a little insight into my January plans, what I'm sewing this month, what's coming up as well. Um, I think I included the wedding dress bits in here because I am going wedding dress shopping slash looking in two weeks. So it's part of my January plans is sitting with this book that, because if we're going to get married in November, I have 11 months realistically. Uh, we're going to see a venue next week though, so I'm so excited. Um, and then hopefully we'll have a wedding date. We are holding a date, I'm not telling you when it is yet, because fingers firmly crossed that it will happen, I feel like I'm jinxing it. Um, but yeah, 11 months, and I need to sew my wedding dress, my evening dress, four bridesmaids dresses, three ties, and a shirt. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. Um, but I'm very, very excited. So thank you all so much for watching. It is a pleasure to be back on here. I am going to be back weekly. Um, if you are interested, if you're not, you don't need to listen to this bit, but if you are interested, next week will hopefully be part two of the Alex Coat sew along. And then I'll do a video for my birthday as well. Until then folks, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.